The questions that comes to us very often from people today when they talk to us about Islam is just not capable of handling today's world. The matters that are coming up on a daily basis and how could a religion 1400 years ago possibly deal with the way that things are happening today? It's just too antiquated, too out of date. There really isn't a solution in Islam to today's problems. This is what we've heard from many people. On the other hand, we hear people offer their uh, views based on democracy, telling us that democracy is in fact the solution to the problems of today's world, and that in fact that each and every country would be better off if they would employ some form of democracy. However, I want to think about something and take that break, the mental break, and ask myself, is this true? Is democracy all that modern? Uh, let's look. First of all, what is the word democracy? Where does it come from? Demos is from Old Greek, the Kone Greek, and we'll take a look at that and think about this. Demos. It means human beings. Kind of makes you wonder where the word demons come from, but anyway. <laughs> the other word is kratos. What is kratos? It means to rule. To rule. Demos kratos. Democracy, the people rule. That's more or less the way it's understood. Now this has some <laughs> immediate problems when you think about it, because if all of the people rule, then who's being ruled? Just think about that. If everybody's making the rules, then who are the rules for? There's another point that goes along with this as well. When we start talking about people ruling, if you said it's the majority rules, and that's pretty much what we understand democracy today, to be something where the majority of the people will vote on something and that's how it's going to go. But there's a problem here. What if the majority of the people decide that they want to be ruled by communism? Then what happened to democracy? What happens if the majority of the people agree to be ruled by despotism? Or what if they agree that we'd like to be ruled by magic huh? or astrology? Then what would we do? Now let's look at what Islam is offering for us. And by the way, Islam is coming 1400 years ago without doubt. And we refer to a lot of the teachings in Islam in the Arabic language. So just like we had to translate out of the old Latin language of 2000 years ago, we also are going to have to translate from the Arabic language as well. And let's look at the, what Islam is offering as a solution. From the scholars of Islam that I asked them about the question, they told me that Islam has something very beautiful. It's called shura. Shura. Now, what is shura? Actually, it comes from an old Arabic word, which means shara. Shara is to extract or pull out from. And it particularly uh, implied that you were taking the honey out of the beehives. You know the honeycomb inside the beehive where they put all the liquid, the bees put the liquid, and when you extract it from there, that's called shara. Now, in the same way that you extract honey from the beehive to get something lasting and sweet, so shura is to take and extract from the people's minds, from their ideas, and pull out something also sweet, something also that's a big benefit to the people. But consider this. In the case of Shara, the honey already exists, doesn't it? And the people already exist. And it's an only one component, and that is to extract from the people, to extract from them their ideas, and then use it and supplement what we're talking about in Islam. Now, watch this. In the Quran, Allah says, Wa umrahum shura bainahum. And we take the meaning of this in English to be to take mutual consultation and opinions from yourselves. Sit together and talk about the subject and then extract pull out, just like you pulled out the honey, pull out the ideas, get the ideas of the people, and then see how they apply. And this is the idea of shura. I want to compare that now to the democracy that we've been talking about. 
The democracy is set up so that the people make rules. But is it really fair? Now, 2,000 years ago, we know that Rome was ruling according to what they called their democracy, but they did not allow women to have any vote whatsoever in the matter. Nor did they allow any of the slaves to speak out any of the matter. Because after all, they're slaves. We don't need to let them say anything. Nor any aliens, those folks who are expatriates, those who are living in the society but not really full citizens, we'll say. So where would that leave you or I? Well, maybe if you're a woman, you don't get a vote in it. If you're a slave, you don't get to say anything about it. And certainly if you're not a card-carrying member of the party, you're out. So it could be very exclusive. Whereas with Shura, anybody can offer an opinion. And Shura doesn't just apply only to Islam. Shura is the Arabic word meaning to take opinions, and it could be for something to do with Islam or not to do with Islam. But now, in Islam, there is one basic huge difference, and that is that the laws themselves are based on the teachings and principles of revelation from Almighty God. Now, for those who would be ready to just throw this out the window right away and say, oh, you're going to talk about Allah, and uh, we don't want to hear about that. You know, we've got our own ideas. But where will you get those ideas from? Now, a, a lot of people don't realize today that America, where I'm from, relies heavily, really, on the Magna Carta, which was signed many, many, many centuries ago by the king of England. And in the Magna Carta, it only gave certain rights to some people. Then following that, the Constitution of the United States is still based largely on some of the teachings found in the Old Testament, the books of Moses. And if you consider that, you can still see the influence then of a God-revealed religion. The problem comes in, though, is that the human beings seem to think they have the right to overrule God on his revelation. Whereas in Islam, the shura takes the opinion, extracts from the people, and then compares it to what God has. And as long as it doesn't compromise nor alter the teachings and the commandments of God, then this is something to be considered by the people that they can implement according to the needs, according to what they have uh, in front of them. Now, if you consider that there is a God and he has mandated certain commandments, then you would have to assume that this would be for a reason. Because if there's a God and he's the creator of everything, certainly he would be in a better position than you or I to decide what should be done and what should not be done. And all of this would work together to be what? to be the constitution of the human being. Now, what I've done now is to take a little break here and let my thinking start going in a direction. What I want to do now is let you ease up, contemplate what I just said, then I want to come back and give you what I consider to be the solution for today's problems for humanity. So sit back, relax, stay right there. We're going to be back with more. Take a break. Huda TV awarded for excellence. By the grace and blessings of Allah, on the 2nd of February 2012, Huda TV was honored by the Forum for Social Studies based in London with branches in Canada and Saudi Arabia, represented by Dr. Abdullah Omar Nasif in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia with the Award of Excellence. This prestigious award is presented annually to individuals and organizations that have excelled in the field of English language Islamic media. Dr. Hamid El Hamas, the chairman of Huda TV and Maj Channel's group, received the distinguished award on behalf of Huda TV. فقد سعدنا والله الحمد في هذا المساء بتكريم لقناة الهدى وهي القناة الناطقة باللغة الإنجليزية منذ ما يزيد على سبع سنوات ولله الحمد وهي تبث 
على الهوت بيرد وعلى النايسات وحصل لها ولله الحمد حضورا طيبا في اكثر الدول الاوروبيه. May Allah grant Huda TV all success and ever make it a source of authentic Islamic knowledge. We're back. You're watching Take a Break. I'm Yusuf Festus, and we've been talking on the subject of democracy versus shura in Islam and whether or not Islam can effectively and appropriately rule in today's world using the teachings of Islam. Let us consider a couple of points and let our brain think about this just for a minute. If you believe there's a God, isn't it correct then that God is the one who would be the best at making the rules? At the same time, we realize that things change about us all the time. And along with that, we should consider that human beings have rights too. As a matter of fact, that's one of the biggest principles of Islam. It teaches that there are always rights, but there are always limits. And this is one of the keys that I believe that is missing from the so-called modern democracy, is not knowing where the limits should really be drawn. And the first and foremost limit is never to put anything in the position of worship other than the one creator and sustainer of the universe. This means that the decisions we make in our daily life need to be affected by the one who created us. Now for those who don't want to believe in God or don't want to believe in a particular type of God, if you will, then of course they're going to have their opinions too. But Islam is allowing them, even them, to participate in the shura or the council. One of the things I think we overlook today is the fact that something can work even though it's old, even though that it's very, very, uh, shall we say, uh, centuries back, and at the same time, though, it can be as effective as we are. And there's one of the real problems, isn't it? that it's us. It's not really the law, but it's those who are trying to recreate or rethink or get around the law. Gambling, dealing in usury or interest, alcohol, adultery, murder, all of these subjects are clearly dealt with in the Old Testament and of course the New Testament and in the last testament, the Quran, these things have been verboten, forbidden. And we're not supposed to do these things. And if somebody does it, there is punishment associated with it. This is known for centuries, even before recorded time. Now, here we have something that today people are trying desperately to get around these clear rules. But if we were to assume that there is a God, and we were to begin to apply this rule of shura that we talked about earlier, extracting or pulling out from the good ideas and opinions of the people, we would find that these would be the solutions to today's problems. One of the things that we look at when we talk about this is the condition of our youth, the condition of our kids and what they're up to today and what's going on with that. And how can they be affected with this? Well, again, according to Islam, there's no age limit on who can participate in the shura. They don't have to be, let's say, 21 years old to have a vote. They don't have to be 18 years old to have a say-so in the matter. It doesn't have to be just from men. And even slaves could participate, and this is known ever since 1400 years ago. At the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he first was born, women had a horrible condition. Yet when Islam came, it freed them up and allowed them to participate, to have a voice, to have a say-so in the matter. The same was true for the slaves. In fact, Islam encouraged people to free the slaves and give them the opportunity to live a full and complete free life. At the same time, the youth were also brought into and incorporated into this structure of shura giving everybody the opportunity to speak their voice. It doesn't mean we're going to listen to every single person to the extent that what he says, we're going to do it, but it means that everybody gets to participate. Now, what happens? Of every shura or council, there is one who's called the emir. The emir is a human being who uses his brain. Now, he's elected by the shura. So, 
he should then have the final vote, the final say-so. Now, what happens here is that the people participate in the shura by offering their ideas, and then the emir listens to each one. Now, he can elect at the end of the consultation to accept the majority vote of everybody, or he can accept the vote of the minority, or even one particular person according to what he understands is the best way to apply the law that's been mandated by Almighty God. And now we're going to run into this. Well, how do we know what God has said for us to do? There are many versions of the Bible. There are many different transcripts. There are different manuscripts out here. How do we know which one is real? And some of them contradict each other. Ah, again, we come back and look at Islam. That's not the case in Islam. There's only one version of the Quran. The Quran is one, and it's still in the Arabic language. And anybody can sit down and learn Arabic and understand what it says. In addition to that, the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, are preserved, and the style of the shura is right there in front of us. And we can see, just as they did 1,400 years ago, how to bring about this beautiful teaching of shura. And you let the people express themselves. This brings out expression. It brings out artistic creativity. It brings out the love and the compassion that each other uh, would have for the individual, for the family, for the general ummah or nation, and for all people. In fact, if you want to really think about it, I want to tell you about this. We talked about democracy, the people rule. What better way to have people rule than to be able to extract from each other their opinions, their feelings, their goals, their ideas, and then apply it to something that is concrete and solid, such as the Ten Commandments. And look to the Quran and look to the teachings and understand how these really affect each other. It makes sense to somebody who really thinks about it that people should have rule, they should have participation, but not the ultimate rule. Because if that were the case, that all people ruled everything, then who would be the ones being ruled? And we would constantly come back to this same question over and over and over. How could everybody rule everybody? So consider and take a break. Like I always say, take the break and think about this. If the human beings will apply what we have in Islam, Take it easy, think about it, and then put forth their expression, extract from each other to get the idea. Then what's going to happen? We're going to be able to come about this whole thing with a better, I think, conclusion. Now, when people sit together and talk about ideas, sometimes there are going to be opinions in there that you and I are going to reject immediately. But in the Shura Council, each person is allowed to complete what they want to say, to finish what they have. Even if you said, oh, this is, you know, somebody else already said it, or this doesn't work, we talked about it in the last meeting, the Shura allows them to express themselves. Now, this is very important. Not because that the person's um, idea is going to affect the outcome, but it does affect each one of us to see where other people's opinions are coming from. And it is important that a person have the opportunity to express themselves. On a national level, obviously, you couldn't have all the people sit together in one giant, let's say, 50 million people sitting together making a decision on something. But what you can do is have elected officials. Again, this is not against the idea of democracy. In fact, the idea of the Republican form of government is based on exactly that, having someone speak for the public and represent the people. And so in the same way that we have that in the free societies today, this has always been something, a part of Islam. To have representatives who you elect, you choose this person to speak on your behalf. Then he sits with the people and takes their opinions from his constituency. Then he will sit with the larger shura. And in Arabic, that's always been there, by the way, it's called majlis ashura, which means the, the big sitting or gathering of those who are extracting and pulling out the opinions. Now, from each one of these meetings, you would have someone who would again be the emir. He would sit and listen and consider all of these opinions. Then at the end, as we said, he could take the opinion of all or some 
or even none. He could use the opinion which he knows to be based on the true teachings of Almighty God. And that would be the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is something to contemplate when you take your break today and you want to spend some time thinking about it. Think about this subject. Think about what Islam says about democracy and shura. Until next time, this is Yusuf Estes telling you, take a break. Assalamu alaikum. سمع الله لمن حمد ربنا ولك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وما بينهما وملء ما شئت من شيء بعد أهل الثناء والمجد